In this video, you're gonna learn how I validated an info product that has made over $400,000 this year. As an entrepreneur, the last thing you wanna do is spend a lot of time, energy, and resources building something that nobody actually wants or that they're gonna actually buy. So to help make sure that doesn't happen to you, I'm gonna walk you through the exact steps I followed to validate my course, Effortless Output in Realm, that has now made over $400,000 since January. Better yet, the method I used was completely free and took under a month. By the way, if you're new here, my name's Nat. I'm the founder of Growth Machine and a writer and entrepreneur living in Austin, Texas. If you want to learn more about building passive income or starting side hustles, be sure to subscribe because I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on just that. All right, here are the five steps we're going to cover. One, finding a good niche for your idea. Two, outlining the product. Three, pre-selling it to test it. Four, building in public. And then number five, actually launching your new project. But first, let's talk about what is validation and why is it so important? Validation is how you know an idea is going to make money. It's really easy to assume that, oh, you have this incredible idea and if you just build it, the customers will show up, but that might not happen and you might waste a ton of time and energy in the process. What makes sense in your head might not always be what the customer wants. So finding some people who are willing to give you money and buy your product before it's even made is the surest way to make sure you're creating something that people will actually buy once it's done. So what is validation? Validation is money in the bank. If no one has paid for it, it doesn't count. It's not somebody saying they're gonna pay for it, not somebody saying you know they'd really love to try it when it comes out. It's not them joining your email list. It is cash in the bank. If they haven't paid for it, it's not really validated. Tesla's Model 3 launch is a great example of this because they built a prototype, they demoed it, and then they pre-sold 400,000 cars before they'd even built the factory to make them yet. And that was how they knew how many they need to make, how much capacity they had to prepare for, and it perfectly set them up for success with that product line. But don't worry, you don't even need a prototype to validate an idea. We're gonna make it much simpler than that. So let's jump into step one, which is finding a niche to target and to build a product for. Before you even think of a product, you need to find a problem that people are invested in getting help solving. Because if you don't have a good problem for your product to target, it's gonna be much harder to sell it. A good counter example here is the failed YC startup Juicero. They built a $400 machine to help you squeeze juice out of vacuum sealed plastic bags of juice that they sent you. And they raised $120 million to build this business. Turned out nobody wanted to pay $400 for a box that can squeeze plastic bags. and they ended up going bankrupt. For a super simple example of doing a better job than Juicero did, in my last video, I went over nine really great tools for helping you sleep. But the reason I made that video was that I sent out a short Twitter thread of a bunch of those products and why I liked them, and that Twitter thread did extremely well. So because I saw that do super well, I knew there might be interest in doing a video, which takes 10 times longer than a Twitter thread, but I had validated it by seeing it do well on Twitter already. So how do you figure out if the niche you're thinking of targeting is a good niche to build a product in? One really easy way to do this is to write an article about the problem you're trying to solve. For me, I got really interested in Rome, and I knew a lot of other people were interested, but they didn't know how to get started using it. So I wrote an article on everything I loved about it. I posted it on Twitter and shared it with some of the people at Rome, and from there it really took on a life of its own, ending up on the front page of Hacker News, driving over 20,000 people to my site in the first two weeks since I published it. That was enough of a signal to me that people were really interested in learning how to use Rome, but they weren't finding good material on how to do it. And that gave me the initial sign I needed that there might be a good opportunity here to build a product. At that point, I moved on to step two, which is outlining what the initial product could look like. Now, creating a detailed outline of your product before you build it is gonna help you with a few things. One, it's gonna make sure that you don't overbuild. The last thing you wanna do is make something way too complex that takes you years and years to build. The outline helps you keep it to the simplest core feature that is gonna let you start to validate whether or not this is a good product or not. Uh, it also helps give you something to start reviewing with people. Before you've even built the product, you can use your outline to get some feedback to see what people think of the idea. And again, save yourself a lot of time building things that people might not want. And it helps you clarify your thoughts before you start building. If you hadn't started outlining it, then you might have built a ton of stuff that you didn't need to build. So getting a really robust outline of what your product is gonna look like is gonna save you a ton of time and energy. For me, I just listed out all the topics I wanted to cover in the course and wrote it out into a basic table of contents that I'll be able to share with people. Now that's a super simple version of this. For another example, Justin Mayers, the founder of Kettle and Fire, wanted to launch this bone broth company. So he made a very simple landing page outlining what would be in the bone broth, what was so great about it, put it up, and then used that to start getting some PayPal presales. Again, 
Don't get too complex, don't overthink things. It's really easy to waste a lot of time in this outlining stage. You just want something that's robust enough that you could show it to people and start hopefully collecting some pre-orders because that's what we're gonna do in the next step is start collecting pre-orders for your product. Once you have your initial product outline, you can use that outline to start collecting pre-orders. And this is the most important step because if you get no pre-orders here, you need to go back to step one. Don't assume that you know better and that you should just build it anyway. If no one is willing to buy just based off your initial idea at a deep discount, it's probably not something you wanna spend a lot of time building. So again, be honest with yourself here. If nobody is willing to give you money for this idea before it's built, it's probably not a very good idea. And again, you can keep it pretty simple. All I did here was I took a screenshot of that table of contents and then I posted that screenshot on Twitter. And I said, hey, uh, send me $50 on PayPal and you'll get early access to when it starts to launch. I said, I'm gonna close it at 25. I created a little bit of scarcity there and I just waited to see what would happen. Within a few hours, I had PayPal payments from over 50 people past the 25 cap that I had tried to set. And so that was a really strong sign to me that people were very interested in this idea and that I should go ahead and start working on it. Now you might say, oh, but what if I don't have any Twitter followers? You don't need them. That was just what was really helpful for me. I actually launched another course similar to this a few years ago that did over $50,000 in the first week before I really had any audience. And there's a couple of good places you can go to test your product idea. Subreddits, so Reddit communities that are interested in your problem or the type of thing that you're trying to address are a great testing ground for ideas. They're gonna be brutally honest, but they're also gonna be really supportive if they really like what you're building. You can also look in Facebook groups. So if you find a Facebook community that's interested in the type of problem you're trying to address with your product, they can be really, really helpful for finding early customers and getting feedback, as long as you're an engaged member of the community and you're not just rolling in trying to sell what you're building. So even if you have no followers, no email list, nothing, finding online communities is a great way to hack it uh, until you build up a bit more of that following. Once you've gotten some pre-sales, now you can move on to step four, which is building in public. Now the first thing is don't shut off pre-orders, right? So what I did is I set up a more detailed landing page after I gotten those initial pre-orders and I said, hey, here's more details on what I'm building, here's why I should sign up, and then you know had an option to buy early access for $100. So that rewarded everyone who jumped in really early by them getting it for only 50. And now anybody who heard from them that it was great could join at the $100 price. And this made sure that as I was continuing to build the product with those early customers, there were ways for anybody else who they referred to join in as well. Now building your product along with all of your pre-sale customers is really fun because they're gonna be very invested in all the progress you're making. They're gonna to wanna to share feedback along the way and it makes it a less lonely experience. It makes it a lot more fun to be building a product with people who are really, really interested in it and who really wanna give you a lot of feedback. So what I did is I put all the early customers in an online forum and then as I was releasing parts of the course, I shared it with them to get their feedback so I could improve in the future videos. This was a really simple way to get a lot of feedback and testimonials as well as to create some accountability for me to actually get it done and get it out on time versus procrastinating and dilly-dallying on it. Pre-sales are a great way to kind of light a fire under your ass to continue to push out the product and get it done on time. And once you've finished building out everything in that initial table of contents and that initial outline you made, now it's time to fully launch your product. If you've been doing a good job engaging all of your pre-sale customers as you go, you should have a lot of great testimonials at this point from people who really enjoyed what you've already built and are happy to share that on your landing page, email copy, whatever. But everything that goes into doing a really great launch is beyond the scope of this video. So if you'd like to see another one on how I actually launched the course and then made the bulk of that 400 grand uh, this year, then leave a comment letting me know that you wanna see more details on that and be sure to subscribe when that video comes out. Now see what I did here? I didn't want to make all three, four, five, six of these videos at once because if you don't like them, then uh, there's no reason for me to do them. So by pre-validating the idea of this series with this video, I'm making sure that it's something you actually want to see so that I don't waste a ton of time making videos nobody wants. But if it is something you're interested in, then I know that I'm making videos people are actually going to enjoy. So again, if you do want to see more on building out the course, launching it, building the subscribers for it, all of that, uh, be sure to subscribe and leave a comment letting me know that you want that follow-up video. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to validate a product idea. Like I mentioned, I'm gonna be doing a bunch more videos on business building, side hustles, passive income, whatever. Uh, and so if you're interested in all of that, be sure to subscribe and leave a comment on which part of the process you'd like to learn about most. Also, if you're trying to learn more about entrepreneurship, picking the right books to read is really important. So be sure to check out my other recent video on why you shouldn't try to read 100 books per year and how to focus on what books to read instead. Hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video.